exhaust is back on I'm just going to um, reassemble this and I'm going to prime the oil pump I'll show you how that all works oil pressure right no distributor in at the moment down here you can see the inside the hole there's a toothed cog thing in there a, a, a flat head mm -hmm. There it is, you can probably see it now. I don't know what's going on, on my phone at the moment. The screen is utterly wank on it. You see it in there? I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyway, it's the top of the oil pump. To prime the oil pump, I'll put an oil filter on first of all. There he is down there. Um, secondly, I've got one of these little tools. You could probably do it with a socket or something. In fact, I've had success of fitting a socket over the end of the uh, of, of the pump drive. But all you really do with this thing is put this onto the pump drive uh, and then wind it over with a drill. Um, it's important to wind it in the right direction, otherwise you'll just empty the pump out rather than filling it up. Um, and you'll know when you've got oil pressure because it will noticeably put load on the drill. Now, in order to work out which way you're going to turn it, the best thing to do is to look at your distributor. More often than not, your distributor will have an arrow with rotation or direction of rotation. And we can see that this thing is rotating clockwise. Yeah, so it's quite important that the drill also winds clockwise. Right, so let's give this a go. Oh, not got any warm on today, it really is. Right, now. Just took a while. There is one way, other way you can tell, and that's to undo one of these pipes. So we've got the oil cooler pipes here at the top of the radiator. If I just crack that joint, there's oil coming out of it. And I know it's prime the pump. Um, is it one inch? It is. There it goes. Oh, there's only oil up here. Just bear in mind that this tank will be empty as well. Yes, there's oil up there. Which is good news. Oh, can't get the fucking pipe back in again. Come on, you bastard. Oh, come on. Fucking thing. There we go, it's in. Right, so the good news is there's oil up there, which means that it's filled the oil cooling tank. Um, and I'm going to assume that it's also filled the uh, oil pump. Because it has to go through the pump in order to get up to here. So that's it, that's, that's kind of priming the oil pump. Obviously filling it with Vaseline, which has other uses I'm sure, um, but it's very good at priming Rover V8 pumps. Right, now I need to strip you in. So if we are, right, so move that round to there, and try again. Oh my goodness. This thing started today. Woohoo! Right, we're going to try again. So into the hole, position the rotor where I want it to be. Down we go. Oh, that's close. I think that's going to go. It's gone. Right, so now looking at this, I have got. Pointy at number eight. I think it's going to be pointy at number eight. 
I think I'm one cylinder out because I can't adjust the ignition far enough around it to point at number one. So we're pointing at number eight. Let's just double check we are at top dead center, which we are. Right, so we need to go round a little bit further. I'll show you what I've done here. So I've pushed the distributor in. Push the distributor in. Um, and here you can see that with the rotor home and the uh, vacuum advance pretty much where it needs to go. And I, I did mark the base plate up before I took it all out. So there's there's a, a mark between the bottom of the uh, distributor and the body. Um, however, the rotor's on its way towards number eight. So it needs to be nearer the red dot. Right. So let's try that again. We're there. Right, I want to crank this thing over um, and just double check that I'm getting oil pressure. Um, I will disable the ignition. Um, I need to re enable the fuel pump. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll do that after I've cranked it over. Oh, fucking hell. Coldius, Waldius. All my wheel nuts on the floor down here because I've got to do check some things over on the brakes. Oh, right, that'll be the battery's not tight. Right, let's tighten the battery up, try again. We have oil pressure. Right. Which is good news, isn't it? Right. Ignition back on again. I'll see if it starts. I need to run the cam in, uh, and I'm not going to do that tonight because it is half past five, um, and the weather is inclement enough as it is. We really don't want to be adding to the joy. Oh, it's actually snowing. Yes. Right, one minute. Put the petrol back on again. Let's see if it starts. Sounds like the ignition is not absolutely on the nail here. Let's try rotating it just a tiny bit. Let's try that way. No, I'm gonna go back this way. Where's the mark on the base plate? Right, more or less there. Let's try that. And this is uh, flashing on the dashboard because I've not connected that. That's ignition timing. Come on, go. The morning after, the night before. Right, okay, so looking into this, I've got the engine at top dead center, bang on. I've put the marks um, on the distributor body pretty much back where they were from a previous point. You can see the red, can you see the red line down there? I don't know if you can see the red line down there. Um, you can if I do the torch just off a little bit. You can just see the red line um, below the vacuum advance, about there. There's the red line. So the distributor's in the right position. Fairly confident with that. I found an ancient old picture of my engine bay. Shows the distributor in exactly the same position. It also shows the rotor pointing at position number one, which is marked on the body. Now I've remarked the uh, the position number one on the body, and you can see that the uh, the rotor is in the wrong place. So yeah, distributor uh, it has gone in um, not exactly right. Now um, because 
this has been a bit of a faff um, and I've been in this faff before with this thing because the uh, you just need to be one gear out on the mesh and it won't go in right. So basically what it says is if you are fitting a brand spanking new distributor or whatever it says turn the distributor drive until the rotor arm is approximately 30 degrees anti-clockwise from number one spark plug. So what I need to do I've marked number one position number one position is here where that red mark is there um, and the rotor probably needs to be over here somewhere before I start and I think that that's what the problem was I've not gone in in the right place so let me use the baseline that I've got which is that baseline for the distributor body position and that baseline for the number one firing position and get the distributor in the right flipping place um, it'll work what's the worst that's going to happen Right, got the distributor back in, in the uh, the correct location. I've just roughly put the HT leads on, let's see if it goes now. Um, battery. Pause. Right, here we go. It's sounding better. Not entirely happy though. I might have HT leads on the wrong way round. Let's just move the distributor around a tiny bit. Oh, she's distributor moved up. Yes, distributor's popped up. <laughs> right, that's no good. I need to push the distributor down um, and put the clamp on. But it's, it's moved around one position, which is good news. No. Right. Put the clamp on the distributor. <laughs> misfire I'm not going to go too far with that it starts I have to check all the uh, plug leads now because I've had all these bloody plug leads off I've got a misfire um, but it started and it ran so ignition time is not far off woohoo right it's running well enough on gas this is what the bloody um, solenoid thing was doing the other day um, it runs on gas, no misfire, it misfires on petrol. Um, but what's happening with the solenoid is there's a break in the circuit somewhere. So it's dropping the, um, um, what's his name, the gas out periodically. So we'll put it onto petrol. We've got a misfire on petrol and I suspect it's just a dodgy injector. So I'm going to have to check all the injectors. It doesn't do that on um, LPG, so it's going to be an injector. It's nothing to do with ignition. Pretty good news, eh? He starts and he goes. So let me sort the injectors out. I'm going to have to take each of the injector wires off, make sure they're on the correct location. Probably means I'm going to have to take the plenum off, which is a pain in the bollocks, but you know, these things happen, don't they? Um, and then I need to find out why this LPG keeps cutting out. There's a dodgy connection somewhere. But then I've had it all yanked around, haven't I? So I'll suss that out. LPG's least of my worries. Let me get it running smooth on petrol first. Found it. Number one injector. Number one cylinder. It's only got one terminal in there because the terminal's pushed through. I'll just cut the shroud on the back. And the terminal's pushed through the back uh, for some reason. Not entirely sure I know why. Um, so let me push that back on. Um, if I rotate the clip slightly, the clips hold the um right i'll do this gonna do this two-handed but you use a screwdriver to push the terminal back in and then check it locates and that should fix that fix that then just one injector right need to get the ignition timing done now then i want to run this cam in which means making a shitload of noise Woo sounds alone there right we're all back together again um, need to bed the brakes, sorry, bed, bed the cam in now, then I'm going to get on with brakes. So I've been hat hard on. So, bedding a cam in, I know I've had this thing running for a little while now. Basically, you need to just run it at 2000 RPM for 20 minutes, it says. Um, 
and I haven't got the LPG working either, so it starts nice now though. Right, there goes the viscous fan. About 15 minutes in on this so far. Um, I've had to turn it off a couple of times as the cooling system warning light came on, just burping air out of the system. Um, it's running a lot smoother now than it was before. I think it's running on petrol at the moment. I need to fix the LPG still. I'm going to go through and just find out there's a broken wire somewhere that's um, sending an odd signal down towards the um, solenoids because the solenoids keep clicking open and closed. Very good to get this going again though. That's about it. Nice steady idle. Steady for this one anyway. Bed it in gently because, of course, it's um, got new cylinder gaskets in it. A viscous fan kicked in. Good that it's working, eh? No leaks. Oh, the cooling system was pressurised again. Why isn't the cooling system pressurised again? system I managed to get it stabilized there was two leaks there was one on the downpipe there and there was one on the bottom of the um, evaporator reducer whatever Fucking snow coming down look welcome to autumn Good grief um, yes so cooling system now I'm happy with what I'm doing now is I'm looking at why my front calipers are leaking. These are the ones I rebuilt. But I don't understand why they're leaking. Very slight leak, but it's enough of a leak to worry me. So I stuck my intermittent problem with the LPG. So this little connector here goes onto the back of the LPG switch. Here we are, LPG switch. Allows me to choose between petrol or LPG. That black wire there with the chewed up bit of crap on the end of it is the earth wire which is no longer actually attached. So that explains why that's not working. So what I need to do is to push out this terminal and see if I can get a more reliable crimp on the earth wire. Then I can use LPG, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Right, it's working. Let's turn the power down a little bit. There's less noise then. Straight to the microphone. Me. The road you cock. It's the only pheasant joke I know, apart from the pheasant plucker. We all know that one. I'm off the really narrow lanes in a second and onto the slightly wider lanes. I can actually feel this thing surging at, um, or surging in power that is, not surging in anything wrong, but surging in power when I get to about 1500 RPM, which it certainly wasn't before. Check. 
Oh, big old fucking truck coming up here. He's a fucking monster. Um, these guys pulled into a wider lay-by down there. That's nice of you, chap. Cheers, Mr. Uh, NWF Agriculture. Oh, I think I'll be enjoyed driving this car. Man. The problem is, when the camshaft goes, you get a very, very, very gradual decline. Um, and then, one day, you kind of notice that the performance is lacking somewhat. Well, now, I, I never got to that point. Really didn't. Um, and, in all honesty, um, I'm just going to go right. It's towards a closed road, I know. But, what? I'm going to go right. So I'm going down to Newtown Bridge. I never got to the point where I found that the performance was really, really, really bad. Go past Shotskin. And the economy was always the same. But it never really struggled to pull. Well, we're not going to give it a boot here because the road's wet and... Uh, the two front calipers. Um, I, I'll, I'll do a, a video on the front caliper because I'm going to analyse what the fucking problem is here. Um, the reason being is that those calipers weren't leaking. I stripped them apart. I um, bought a complete refurb kit for those calipers from a company, a reputable company, fitted those seals to the calipers and both of them, all four pistons are leaking. Now, that concerns me. Mostly concerns me. It's getting dark, isn't it? There was a car to get the boot. There we go. Ha ha!
whole series can go into the barn undercover because it's got a swimming pool in the back as well because of all this weather which is most inclement. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hens. Ten hens and two cocks. What the fuck are you lot doing? You silly asses. But no, there's Miss Hunter's offer. Silly cats. Fuck it all. What are you lot doing here? Right, a success. Marvellous.